Welcome to the motherfucking Weasley update. I'm Aiden Weiss. I am getting ripped and I am certainly ready to fucking ramble. It is season two, episode 10, and the date is December 9th, 2020. Can't even fucking believe that. We're going to do things a little bit different this time instead of preemptively getting baked. I have a carton of joints right here in front of me. My nice little uh, raw ashtray, and I'm just going to fire this sucker up first. I gotta get rid of the roach from the last jay. What in the hell is going on? Yeah, uh oh, uh, yep, that's the cure egg going because I'm an environmentally irresponsible piece of shit. Ooh, can you hear it? You can almost definitely hear that. Yep. Yep, I'm just going to wait that one out. I am the worst fucking podcast host of all time. But uh, I got some exciting stuff to talk about. First of all, the sun is out. I just love it. <sighs> yep. Yep. What an awful, awful sound. And I'm sure it's going to be so much worse through my my phone's microphone. Let's go check on my cup of coffee. Hopefully it didn't explode. Nope. Not this time. Let's put it in the freezer that is completely empty. I'm actually going to lay down a, uh, uh, excuse me, a paper towel just in case it spills a little bit. Put it in the freezer, cool the shit down, and get this joint fired up. Yeah, I got a carton in these bad boys, uh, just as basically like a prop for the photo slash video shoot, I'm experimenting with some shit, and so let's see how many I have left, not counting this one. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'll probably use one or two more for more photos and videos a little bit later, so I'm looking pretty good. All right, let's get this bad boy fired up and talk about some mostly movie shit, because despite theaters being shut down, that seems to be the only... Uh, Notable news as of recently. Oh, I should get my water ready, too. I already smoked one of these today, and it's just... You know, they get your throat... Oh, look at that. Man, that bad boy just burned down the excess paper at the end so perfectly, all the way to the nub. Ooh. Mmm. That is fucking good shit. God, I wish you could smell this joint. It smells so good. It's called Grandpa's Breath. The dude, uh, uh, when he pulled them out, they weren't very, like, accessible to check out the THC and shit. And I can't even rem remember what the other two strains were called, but I literally was just like, yeah, dude, I, I guess it comes down to whatever one has the coolest name. And Grandpa's Breath took it. Sounded like some Nightmare Before Christmas shit. God, you might actually be able to smell this through the phone. It's so fucking stinky in the best way possible. Ooh, Grandpa's Breath. Like Frog's Breath? Is that what it is? What fucking Sally puts in her dad's stew? Let's see. Worms, what? He says. God, I just can't get this blunt going. Give me a sec here. Oh, yeah, there we go. Whoo! Yeah, now she is fucking ripping. Yeah, that's hot. Fuck, let's look this shit up about Sally. I can't believe I know it right on the spot. Let's see. It is... I bet if I just look up Nightmare Before Christmas... Nightmare Before Christmas. Joint hit. Um, Frog's Breath. Yep. That is what it was. Ooh. Frog's Breath, Worm's Wart, and Deadly Nightshade. I knew it. I fucking love that movie. No one, <laughs> I forgot a actual frog just crawled out of the jar and 
Wow, that is hilarious. Let's see. It's got a whole section of the Nightmare Before Christmas Wikipedia page. Frog's breath is a jar with a frog inside of it. Blah, blah, blah. The ingredients for the deadly nightshade soup Sally uses to put Dr. Finkelstein to sleep. Yep. It says here that it's used for meals and can overpower any odor. That's right. Because she poisons him and needs the frog breath to mask the poison. Trivia. The frog gun from game Nightmare Before Christmas, The Pumpkin King, is based on frog's breath. There's a Nightmare Before Christmas video game? How the fuck did I not know about this? Video game. Huh. Oogie's Revenge, it says it's called. See, I feel like I did know about this. PlayStation 2 game. Action Adventure Hack and Slash video game. Ba 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 ba. Released in 2004. Interesting. Publishers were Capcom and Disney Interactive Studios. Wow, that's actually really interesting. I wish I could get my hands on that. I, I should totally buy a uh, a PlayStation 2. What's stopping me? So many classic games on that console. Oh, fuck, I've got so many apps to update. Might as well do it while I'm recording the podcast. God, this blunt, or this fucking J is already kicking my ass. This goddamn grandpa's breath, I need a sip of water. Oh, it's getting so resiny and sticky. Ooh. Ooh. God, is that good, though? Well, oh, man. First, we got to talk about The Mandalorian. Big, big spoilers if you weren't caught up on that shit. But they got my boy Grogu. Ooh, and we got to see him throwing around some goddamn stormtroopers. That was pretty cool. Right? Just fucking Moff Gideon goes in there and he's just tossing them around like little bitches. He even force chokes one of them. Maybe both of them. That shit was awesome. I think the next time we see him, he will be all dark sided out. You know. And Mando will bring him to his senses. Man, that show's just so awesome. When I saw that that episode was only 30 minutes, I was like, ah, another filler episode. And then, uh,. Then Robert Rodriguez just killed it. We got Ming-Na Wen, that bitch. In that bitch, whatever her character's name is. And then fucking Boba Fett. We finally got to see Boba Fett kick ass. Using darts that shoot out of his, shoot out of his knees? What the fuck? All this time we heard about what a badass Boba Fett was, but we never got to see it. He's got that gaffy stick, fucking breaking helmets, stabbing people. That was insanely awesome. Hell of an episode. Maybe the best episode yet. Plus, we got confirmation that those things were dark troopers. Plus, just the way that they showed Mando with the uh, the spear at the end. And then just basically reminded us that Moff Gideon had the dark saber. They're, they're just majorly hinting towards the fact that a duel between the two of them is coming up. And I just can't wait. Also, they're bringing Bill Burr back into it. That is just so funny to me. Gotta bring Bill Burr. So the next episode's gotta be like a jailbreak or something. Who knows? I'm so excited. I think there's only, fuck, two episodes left. But, uh, fuck me, is that show just awesome? And the Razor Crest got blown up? I actually saw a video. Someone pointed out that the... So I gotta keep the joint going or it's gonna die. Someone pointed out that the transports that the stormtrooper showed up in were the same transports that the First Order stormtrooper showed up in in the Force Awakens, which are different from any Empire era um, transport ships we've seen before. Which is just another indicator that they are basically the origins of the First Order. Which is very cool in my opinion. 
I think that that is super, super cool. Ooh, and I just can't wait to see what, what they continue to do with it. Oh my god, this joint is burning quick. Like all joints, that's why I prefer blunts, but blunts fuck up your throat way more. Well, the the big, big news we need to talk about is about Spider-Man 3. I've probably talked about this a little bit on here before, but just to sum up what, what we knew prior to the last couple days, um, Doctor Strange is going to be in it, so we know there's some magic of some sort going on. It um, comes before Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, which indicates that the multiverse will be an array um, by the time this movie is happening. And it comes out after WandaVision, which is going to be all about Wanda opening up the multiverse. So it already sounded like we had all the makings of a multiversal Spider-Man movie. But then um, Jamie Foxx's Electro from the Andrew Garfield, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 film uh, was announced to be returning and the Spider-Man 3 film, which, boom, again, showed the multiverse shit. It was weird. I actually have talked about this on here, I remember, because, as I said, I really didn't like that character. I love Jamie Foxx, but I thought that was a terrible role. But, ultimately, I have faith in what Marvel is going to do. Um, ooh, the, the joint died. I need to get this going. I just said... But uh, Jamie Foxx also posted a series of photos. One he captioned, um, I ain't going to be blue this time, which is definitely reassuring. And uh, he also posted fan art that had all three cinematic Spider-Men, as in Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, and Tom Holland. So, And he had to delete that post, of course. Which led to all this hype about how the three of them were returning and there were rumors about that. And then uh, last week sometime, a I think it was a Latin Sony channel uh, posted some video that was like, who's your favorite live action Spider-Man? And it just showed clips of each one. Um, and then it said like, maybe you don't have to choose very soon. They could be teaming up or some shit like that. That went viral. Then of course the video was taken down. And then yesterday it was announced that, what's this guy's name? Basically the guy who played Dr. Octopus from Spider-Man 2, the Tobey Maguire film, is coming back. Alfred, Alfred Molina, yep. Alfred Molina is returning as Dr. Octopus in Spider-Man 3. That's just absolutely crazy. So we have now a villain from the Tobey Maguire films and a villain from the Andrew Garfield films. But what's more, Andrew Garfield was also confirmed. Uh, pendant or Pregnancy permitting Emma Stone is coming back. Kirsten Dunst who played Mary Jane Watson in the Tobey Maguire films, is coming back. Oh, gotta keep letting this joint die right at the end so it's getting close to my face when I light it. And um, apparently Tobey Maguire is... They're still, like, closing the deal. But... Oh, how fucking insane is that? Ooh, Jesus. Oh, this shit's getting close to my face. I just, oh my god. Again, that all just sounds absolutely crazy. I mean, like, it, I there's all these jokes about, yeah, Tom Holland confirmed to ha have a role in his own movie. Because it just sounds like the cast is so crowded. But if Infinity War showed anything, it was that an ensemble cast can be done correctly like that. Especially because we have an established history with each of the Spider-Men and, like, Kirsten Dunst and stuff. So it's not like you would need to explain who they are and their whole story and yada, yada, yada. 
So I'm pretty pumped. And also, this is definitely just a fast track to the Sinister Six, which if you don't know, is a uh, a team in the comics that always commits to tearing up Spider-Man. And they were actually, back in the Andrew Garfield days, going to make a solo film for the Sinister Six. Hard to call that a solo film, I guess. But give them their own movie rather than put them in a Spider-Man movie. Oh, Jesus. And obviously that never happened. But uh, that would have been cool. They tried to set it up in The Amazing Spider-Man 2 pretty hard. You know, with Rhino and at Oscorp, there was the Vulture Wings and Venom and, you know, fucking Dane DeHaan was Green Goblin, all this shit. And they've been slowly setting that up with this Spider-Man. You got Shocker and Vulture in Homecoming. You have Mysterio in the second one, who I really don't think is dead. Scorpion was also in both, actually. He isn't like Scorpion yet, but the dude who would eventually evolve into the character Scorpion is in it. That dude is also on Better Call Saul, I believe. Oh, I just finished that, Jay. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's fucking shaping up to be a huge thing. Plus Venom, like they really, it seems like they can't decide if he is a part of those movies or isn't, um, you know, as in like he's in his own separate universe, but I mean, it really just seems like Marvel doesn't want him to be, but, uh, but Sony's pushing hard. And then you also have Morbius, which everyone thought was a different thing, but then in the fucking Morbius trailer, you have uh, uh, Michael Keaton's Vulture. You know? Hey, Doc, I'm forming a team. If that isn't the fucking a Sinister Six goddamn setup, I don't know what it is. So, like I said, that movie could end up being really crowded, but um, again, I just have faith in... In Marvel, they've just hit it out of the park time and time again. And it just, I mean, it honestly just sounds like a more interesting version of the Flash movie at this point. Because the Flash is also doing a bunch of, you know, multiversal stuff with, uh, oh god. How am I blanking on this? Again, Michael Keaton, actually. Michael Keaton's Vulture, or Michael Keaton's Batman, I mean, and... Oh, sweet Jesus. I am getting so fucking sidetracked right now. I'm just so goddamn baked. Actually, sort of don't feel good. I'm going to pause this real quick. All right, everyone, I'm back. Sort of felt like shit there for a second, but totally feeling fine now. Uh, Back to the Spider-Man shit. The biggest thing I'm honestly pumped about is there are less founded rumors that Charlie Cox will come back as Daredevil. Or more specifically, uh, um, Spider-Man's lawyer. Because if you don't know, Charlie Cox played Daredevil on the Netflix show. Daredevil is a blind man who is a lawyer, but he is also a secret badass superhero. And I would love that so fucking much. That show was amazing. And Marvel just got the rights back because uh, the Netflix show hasn't been on for so long and yada, yada, yada. Someone hit me up. Oh, yeah. I should put this on airplane mode so it doesn't buzz and stuff. Ooh, let's get my coffee out of the fridge. Or out of the freezer, I mean. I have, on a number of occasions, left my coffee in the freezer and then totally forgot about it and I just open it one day and there's frozen coffee and I'm like fuck me coffee's just one of those addictions I'm cool with having I guess oh god damn what is this Keurig called called so fucking good Kroger brand huh light roast artificially flavored hazelnut coffee Creamy and nutty. Ooh. Yeah, it's super fucking good. It was a replacement. I thought I had COVID, so I quarantined up in my studio in Bellingham and uh, and did click list. And I don't even know what I meant to get, but that was the replacement if it wasn't there. And as I said, it ended up actually being 
quite delicious. Oh, man. All this fucking Spider-Man news just makes me want the new Miles Morales game that much more. That game just looks so much fucking fun. My buddy got it. He just got a PS5. I'm super jealous. And he's not even, like, into games like that. He just said it's so fun and that he's been blowing through it. And fuck, I just want it so bad. I, I played the first Spider-Man game so hard and... Even more than Miles Morales, I can't wait for Spider-Man 2, the direct sequel to... I guess it won't be a direct sequel to the first one, and more like a sequel to both of them. But fuck, that game is going to be so fun. I, they just perfected the combat in the last one. God, I almost wish I brought my PS4 up here so I could play it. But just swinging around, trying out new suits, all these different powers you can equip, all these different gadgets, and... The story was also just so awesome. Like, I loved there being a mature Spider-Man. You know, like, so mature. He's still... Part of what makes Spider-Man Spider-Man is, like, his quick-wittedness and uh, always making jokes and shit like that. But he's definitely a little bit older and a little bit more experienced. And that is reflected in what an absolute badass he is and just, like, how well-versed he is in using his gear and shit. It's really, really fun. And you just earn more gear. So many side missions, and that's how you earn gear and suits and stuff. And I just love games like that. Like, the customizable aspect of any game is the most fun part to me almost every time. I mean, there's this, like, in the Kingdom Hearts games, there is a entire section on... There's some space travel in those games, um, but I never really got into it. And then in this last one, Kingdom Hearts 3, like, after I had already beat everything pretty hard, um, I just went, like, did a little bit of light space travel, because if you, like, just float around and blow up some asteroids or some shit, you can get ingredients to help, you know, customize your light, or not your lightsabers, your keyblades, or upgrade them, rather. Like I said, I'm just a fiend for that sort of thing, so I was just spending a bunch of time doing this, you know, flying around in the ship, blowing shit up, and then I realized that there is a pretty in-depth um, ship customization section, and I would spend, I mean, like two hours at a time just customizing the ship and not even flying it around, because, you know, there's, you only have, like, so many points that uh like a worth of stuff that it's sort of hard to explain it's like they're they're very rudimentary shapes these ships and when you're building them it's sort of on a uh, very like grid looking thing that's you know totally three-dimensional and um and f you know so each piece is like a block basically it could be a square block or like in the shape of a triangle whatever um and every one of like every different type of those has a different point value and let's say you just start off the game and you only have 600 points available that means you can only use so many of these fucking blocks up until that 600th value. And so I was just like for like two hours at a time, just mix and matching shit, trying a bunch of shit out. I'd go to like add this and then be like, fuck, I need 20 more points and then go back and try to take off all these little things. And that stuff is just so, so much fucking fun to me. And if I ever get to be involved in a video game, I, I would really like to press something like that i i definitely have ideas for video games and i think that god of war game just like really for me legitimized gaming as a medium of storytelling and same with spider-man for that matter spider-man though i was more compelled by the game flow and the combat and just like being spider-man swinging around the city but god of war was like don't get me wrong, the combat is awesome, but God of War doesn't have... There's no moment, like, in the Spider-Man game where you can just go swing around. Like, that's a huge part of what makes that game awesome is... Yeah, there's a free roam aspect to both games, but, you know, like, in God of War, the, the actual roaming part of free roaming is less cool. Because you're just walking around, you're climbing shit excuse me and even then the climbing itself isn't fun you're literally pressing a button and like pushing up or down 
and then you'll get so far, press circle again. Um, and I don't want to dog on that because it's a system that works really well, but, uh, but in Spider-Man, just like cl- running up buildings and there's so much variation in the way you can run and stick onto things and swing. Like I said, that, you know, doing tricks in the air that you don't even have to be pursuing a side mission, the main story, or just like out kicking ass and stopping crime. You can just be fucking swinging around the city, having a blast. Um, but with God of War, it, it was the story more than anything. Like, it, God damn it, that story was so good. I was talking to everyone about it afterwards, my family, anyone who would listen, because I just thought it was such a fucking compelling story and such an interesting take on the Norse stuff that um, I couldn't hold it inside. Really, really awesome. And I also just thought the idea of mixing... Greek and North st- Norse stuff from the beginning was a really, really interesting idea. And I was a little bit hesitant when I initially heard of that, but, um, but, but they proved me wrong and it worked really well. And like I said, like the story was so good that I walked away from that game thinking, wow, you can like video games could be better at telling certain stories like, God of War would make an excellent show on HBO Max or something, but or a movie, for that matter. But, um, but it's the experience of, like, they just did a, such a good job integrating the narrative into the gameplay and, like, making the actual gameplay such an important part of the story. Um, that, yeah, it was just crazy. I was like, this... You know, this story could not have been told better on any other medium. You know, like, and not to say it couldn't have been done better in the sense that, like, yeah, if they did it on a PS5 or whatever, I'm sure it would, like, perform better. But I just think that, yeah, just, like, as a video game, that was the best way to tell that story. And I was so, so goddamn impressed. And I can't wait for the next one. Literally, that and Spider-Man are the reasons that I want a PS5. They're both PS5 exclusives, actually. Which is funny, because they were both uh, nominated for Game of the Year, whatever year that was. And um, and God of War won. I'm sure I've said that on here. It's such a good fucking game. And, you know, like, again, I don't want to downplay the story of the Spider-Man game, because I walked away from that game thinking that's the best Spider-Man story I've watched unfold in front of me. Like, I don't think it's the best Spider-Man story of all time when you consider comic books and shit like that. But, um, but like, in terms of watching almost like a movie or a show, it was so good. If it was made into a movie, it would, without a doubt, be the best Spider-Man movie to date. Uh, they just nailed every mark. They also had the Sinister Six in that, as I was talking about. It was a good roster, and, like, the way you fought them at the end was really smart. Um, The way you initially are confronted by them is really smart. And just the whole uh, Dr. Octopus stuff is... was done exceptionally well. Because you're working for Otto Octavius the whole time. And just, like, sort of slowly watching him descend into this madness and you know, eventually get the tentacles, and God, it was just really, really well done, I I have to keep applauding the, the people who made that game, um, less newsy, but just so interesting, I, again, I suck at pronouncing his name, Joe Mangelio, or whatever, oh God, uh, yeah, I'm not even gonna try, but again, and as I've talked about on here, he was going to play Deathstroke, in the Ben Affleck Batman movie, he had a Deathstroke cameo in the Justice League movie. Uh, that cameo originally set up the Bat- the Ben Affleck movie, but it was reshot later when Zack Snyder left the project. But now he is coming back for the Snyder Cut of Justice League, which I cannot be more fucking pumped about. Um, but he was recently in an interview talking about the plans for the Batman movie. Which, you know, he got into enough depth that it sort of bummed me out. Because I was like, well, because he just gave the whole thing away, I don't think there's a high chance it's going to be adapted into a uh, 
HBO Max show, which is a bummer, but whatever. Um, <clears throat> but the way he talked about it, it just sound, God damn it. I wish that movie was made. Just sounded so awesome. He said that he dis like the way he described Deathstroke was like a horror movie villain. That's the way he, de- he described it. Like, like the shark and jaws and <coughs> excuse me. And, uh, he said that basically Deathstroke, that it was like this big dark psychological thing and that. Deathstroke killed everyone who was close to Batman because Batman did something to him. Like, he felt like Batman was responsible for something that happened to him. And there was all this stuff about Wintergreen, who's an associate of Deathstroke, uh, like, luring in Alfred, kidnapping him or some shit. Jesus Christ, it just sounded awesome. But the big thing was that he basically set free everyone in, in Arkham Asylum. Which is just, I mean, as I've said, that game is so awesome that I think that would, if that game was made into a Batman movie, same way as the Spider-Man game, it would be the best Batman movie ever. Um, And just the idea, like, Arkham really hasn't been heavily featured a lot in the past, and that would have just been such a good environment for that movie. And I just know the way that Ben Affleck's Batman was done, like, if, yeah, just, like, Arkham as a setting if it followed in suit with the same vibe as what we got in Batman v Superman it would have been perfect and exactly everything I want just to see him like go through and tear up the rogues gallery but basically the idea was that he would go through all of this shit and um uh you know get pretty hurt in the process and then as a result be unable to save Alfred which sounded super awesome. I'm going to wrap this up here pretty quick just because I've got such a busy day. But first, I've got to talk about this HBO Max stuff. Because if you haven't heard, HBO Max will be releasing their entire 2021 movie slate to the streaming service. Or Warner Bros. will be release, releasing their entire 2021 movie slate. That's, I mean, The Suicide Squad. Uh, Dune. Wonder Woman, like huge movies. Warner Brothers is a powerhouse, um, which was just huge news. So they're doing, they're releasing them on the streaming service and simultaneously in theaters, which is just fucking crazy. I mean, that's really going to change the way that shit is done. Uh, But honestly, the craziest part is how every, like the directors of these movies are supposedly really not happy. And Christopher Nolan, you know, he did Tenant and uh, the Dark Knight trilogy and all that stuff. He has been particularly um, uh, opinionated on the subject. Said that he even called HBO Max the worst streaming service. Said that directors went to sleep thinking their movies would be in theaters and woke up learning they would be on the worst streaming service. All this shit, and he also said that's just not how you treat the directors, and with that I agree. But at the same time, it's like, dude, you're a huge reason that this is happening. Like, he was so uncompromising with Tenant being released in theaters that it, you know, cost Warner Brothers money, and they felt like they... You know, they learned from that that people aren't willing to go to theaters right now, which I respect. And uh, and that instead, they would just release them on streaming services. So I think he's being a big old whiner. But actually, the Directors Guild of America, like in the last couple hours I learned, the Directors Guild of America sent a strongly worded letter to the Warner Brothers CEO about it. So whew, we will see what happens. Like I said, that's... Uh, It sounds like some pretty irrelevant news, like, beyond the point of, oh, I'll be able to watch these movies from home, but I truly believe that is going to change the way that, like, movies and theaters and shit operate for a while, so very interested to see what happens. All right, guys, that's it. I will talk to you later. Stay safe out there, and tonight at midnight, I'm dropping the Christmas songs. Um, It's actually called a Christmas special, so uh, be on the lookout. Peace, bitches.